Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Mirei. Um, I am currently staying in South Korea. Today, I'm going to present on Francis Brillen Parker and his progressive education. Um, one of the reasons I chose this topic is that progressive education ideas are prevalent in South Korea. And I have seen many attempts and experiments among educators who try to develop child-centered education. Uh, which is much different from the previous old way of schooling in South Korea. And it calls my attention because of that reason. Uh, so it has been delightful and challenging time for me to prepare this presentation. Okay, uh, let's get into our topic. Mm, let me briefly go over the contents I am covering today. Uh, first, I will briefly go over the political economy and ideology during the post-war era, uh, which was the period of emergence and development of progressive and progressive education. Uh, Francis Parker, whom I will introduce today, was one of the notable progressive educators from this era. And I will briefly go over his biography and get into his philosophy, methodology, contribution, merit, and importance to American education. Also, I will talk a little bit about general progressive education, the term itself, which cannot be described as one theory, since it is a cluster of different theories from different philosophers and educators. Okay, political economy and ideology. Uh, progressive education emerged during the post-Civil War era, late 19th and early 20th century, which can be described as complicated and complex of numerous social, cultural, racial differences and changes. Uh, it was the period of America trying to adjust to massive urbanization and industrialization. These movements caused many social affairs and demanded a better way of life. And as for public education, the role of the public school also has been pressured for changing ideas, from training pupils for their self-development to the adjusting themselves to industrialization, uh, to more focus on Americanized education from different immigrants. Also, humanitarian ideology was the mainstream that evoked the progressive ideas of education. Uh, under all these pressures and socioeconomic changes, progressive education emerged as a reaction against traditional education. Uh, here, Francis Parker, uh, the father of the progressive education, called by John Dewey, came to develop his new approach to education that rejected the rote learning and enlisted the children the natural curiosity in the schooling process. Now, uh, who is Francis Parker? Francis Parker was the early progressive educators who developed and influenced the later progressive philosophers, especially John Dewey. He was the pioneer of shifting the educational focus from the traditional method to the child-centered education. He is known for his admiration of a child, which much resembles Froebel's theory of education. Parker was born in New Hampshire in 1837. He started his career as a teacher when he was 16 years old and became a principal at Carrollton, Illinois in 1859. He went to join the army during the Civil War, and he began studying the theory of Europeans when he came back from the army. After that, he went to Europe for about two and a half a year through his travel in Europe. He was mainly influenced by European educators, especially Froebel, Pestalozzi, and Rousseau. Uh, in 1875, he became a superintendent in Quincy, Massachusetts, where he experimented with teaching methods that revolutionized the system of the old way of education. His approach, which is known as the Quincy Method or Quincy Plan, was much in success. 
He'll go, we'll go over in more detail this method in a second. Uh, with much success in his progressive teaching method, he later became a principalship of the Cook County Normal School in Chicago, which became noted for its liberalizing influence on American education. Uh, he passed away in 1902, just one year after Francis Parker's school opened. Uh, now, let's get into more detail about his progressive theory and how it was applied to pupils in school. And child-centered education, as I mentioned previously, uh, influenced by Rousseau, Pestalozzi, and Froebel's effort of child-centered education, greatly impacted later American elementary education. By his effort, the traditional curriculum of education shifted to the child-centered education. Briefly, child-centered learning is focused on excitement, explorer community, family, and collaborative work. Based on his child-centered education, his theory was uh, based on his focus on child-centered education, his theory was much different from the previous education approach. Um, it was more like experience-based learning rather than getting knowledge from the traditional book or text. He opposed the rote learning, repetitive memorization, and there was no value in knowledge without understanding from his perspective. Okay. So his theory was mostly well presented in his Quincy method, also called Quincy Plan. Uh, Quincy Plan is introduced in 1875 in Quincy, Massachusetts, where he was the superintendency of Quincy School. Uh, here, he dramatically uh, changed the whole system of the previous curriculum and introduced a completely different experiment program. A new experiment program was arranged by interrelated subjects around a central core and emphasized um, social, social activity and uh, creativity, self-expression, and the curriculum included field trips art, music, craft, science, and physical training to develop each child's personality. Uh, uh, Child-centered education is core of the Quincy method. But interestingly, since this method is derived from the respect of human beings, each individual, there is no certain systemic method in Quincy system. Uh, it sounds about a little bit ironic, but since the Quincy method itself is denying a fixed way of doing things, which is a traditional method, Parker believes that the method is entirely personal, changeable, and improvement depends on each individual. Uh, this is why Parker much valued the artistic teaching as thought it would be an ideal method in this sense. As he stated in Quincy Method that there would never was a Quincy Method or a Quincy System unless we agreed to call the Quincy Method a spirit of study and the Quincy System one of everlasting change, which the artist-teacher method is the way he or she reaches an ideal. Therefore, the method is entirely personal, ever-changing, ever-improving. So here, Parker really valued each individual's uniqueness, respect their being, and open the possibility of each individual growth and development. As I mentioned above, that he really respects the children and focused on child-centered environment. As he stated here again, that uh, we knew that the child is good. If he has a chance, an environment of goodness, this knowledge came to us from actual experience. The old-fashioned st stiff and natural order was broken up. The child began to feel that he had something to do for himself, that he was a member of society, 
with the responsibilities that accompany such an important position. It is very interesting that I see there are many things to say about education in South Korea. Over the decades, there have been many voices about the treatment of each pupil from the teacher. Uh, the educational environment and rules have been dramatically changed through the decades. Even in South Korea, I see a lot of similar progressive movements in South Korea's education history, especially in, his pa in this passage. Now it is even illegal to treat each student like it was in before in South Korea. Also, uh, uh, democratic education is one of the essential beliefs of Parker's education theory. Parker believed that the public school was an element in a free society. Because of that, he believed that education for social responsibility and democracy focused on group work and development of social skills, collaborative and cooperative learning project. He stated that school should be a model home, a complete community and embryonic democracy. So he revolutionized the educational approach from traditional to progressive education. As we went through his educational method, he impacted on many school curriculum even today. His innovative approach to learn by experience has been developed and implemented in various ways in many different schools, not only in the States, but also in the other countries, especially in South Korea. Of course, I disagree with some beliefs about his theory as Christian, but I believe his experience-based learning uh, is an inspiration operational and admirable approach. Um, yeah, this is my end of the presentation. I hope it was valuable and enjoyable time for you. Thank you.